Uh, I want to say thank you all once again for uh, being here. I hope that uh, you are enjoying the uh, symposium. And I once again want to thank uh, Joe Schofer uh, and all of the uh, people here at Northwestern University for the tremendous cooperation and help they have been to me in putting on the sixth uh, transportation symposium. Uh, the first speaker I would like you to uh, hear from this morning is really the man who is responsible primarily for this uh, symposium because he was uh, the president of uh, Northwestern University when it started, my very good friend Henry Bean. And Henry, come up and say a few words, please. Well, thank you. Well, I just want to add my welcome uh, to Bill for uh, thank you all for coming. Um, we set up this symposium years ago in honor of Congressman Lipinski because he had done so much for the nation and the state in transportation. And also, he was uh, such a great friend of Northwestern as well. And I'm uh, pleased to say that we're good personal friends, as I have been with now Congressman Lipinski, who also, uh, following in those footsteps, has been so instrumental for the city, the state, uh, region, and the country on transportation, and I should say on science issues as well. And we're proud that he's a Northwestern alum. So Dan, thanks for all that you do. Again, uh, I turn the mic back to Bill, but uh, we're very pleased you're here. Uh, we'll also be honoring Mr. Claypool, and we also uh, also honor Dave Schultz always on this occasion. We're proud of uh, Dave and the role he played at transportation at Northwestern. So again, thanks very much. Thank you, Henry. Henry is also the uh, world's greatest Northwestern football and basketball uh, fan. In fact, uh, I really thought that after he retired as president of Northwestern University, he would get a job coaching some junior college basketball team and, and try to funnel those players to Northwestern University as long as they could get their grades up. <laughs> uh, our next speaker will be a gentleman who uh, helps out uh, Joe and I with this symposium also professor here at Northwestern University. Hani, oh, I know, I, I knew I couldn't do it. You're gonna have to do it yourself, I was. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'm Hani Mahamasani, I'm director of the Transportation Center, and I would like to um, add my voice to, uh, to Henry and to Bill and welcome all of you here at Northwestern. Uh, the Lipinski Symposium is a signature event for us uh, that uh, we are honored to uh, hold them every year um, to, to address um, important uh, policy issues here. Um, um, there we have a, a full program, but I wanted to uh, thank uh, a few people uh, who have uh, contributed to, um, to, to making this event the success that it is, uh, particularly the staff at the Transportation Center. I particularly wanted to acknowledge uh, Brett Johnson, Associate Director of the Transportation Center. Uh, Diana Merrick, where are you, Diana? Um, uh, Diana Merrick, Rebecca Weaver-Gill, Hillary Bean uh, and Robert Reddy for uh, all the efforts that they have put into uh, um, in, into making again this event the the success that it is, and uh, of course last but not least um, Joe Schofer who uh, has um, um, shepherded this event uh, every step of the way uh, with, um, with with Congressman um, with with Bill Lipinski here uh, to whom um, again we're um, grateful for um, his contribution and his friendship to us. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Normally we have uh, four people who uh, vote on who we're going to give the David Schultz Award to. Uh, and we, we did once again this year. And at the first meeting, uh, Joe Schofer uh, nominated uh, Forrest Claypool. Uh, the other two individuals uh, also agreed with that. Uh, I myself uh, simply uh, abstained at that particular time because I happened to have a uh, contractual agreement with the CTA. Uh, so I felt that uh, I had a vested interest in who might be the recipient of the David Schultz Award. But uh, after uh, listening to uh, Joe and a couple of other individuals, I uh, withdrew my uh, abstention and I voted also for uh, 
our award winner today to make it unanimous. But before uh, he comes up to speak, uh, I want to bring up the man that nominated him, the man who works very hard on this uh, transportation symposium, does a great deal of work in behalf of it and in behalf of all of Northwestern, my good friend, my partner, Professor Joe Schofer. I don't usually do this. This is usually your job. But I want... Okay. I can always count on you to finish it off, and I appreciate that. Um, I, actually, it is a great honor and a pleasure for, for me to do this uh, because uh, Dave, Dave Schultz was my long-term friend and my student, and I will uh, happily say that I learned more from Dave than he learned from me over the years. Uh, Dave's uh, wife, Joanne is here. We're very happy that you're with us and that you've stuck with us all, all these years and that for that period of time you shared Dave with, with us. Uh, this is a particularly uh, appropriate award, uh, an awardee, because there is, to me there's an interesting connection between um, Dave Schultz and Forrest Claypool. Uh, Dave was always very interested in, in uh, data-driven decision-making, in progressive management, in, in action and getting things done and getting them done on, the, on, a, on a logical uh, basis and a defensible basis. And that's, the base, that's a, a reason why uh, we selected uh, Forrest Claypool for, for this award. Um, we talked only briefly at, at lunch, but one of the things that occurs to me is that being the president of the Chicago Transit Authority is uh, serving a market which in some respects is never satisfied, uh, no matter how uh, well one does in, in a job like that, there, there, there's always a, a vocal constituency that's not happy. And I suppose that's one of the things that drives the quality of an, an organization like that, is responding to a, a, a vocal and, and, and dependent uh, customer base, client base. And uh, Forrest Claypool's done a really good job with that. From a distance, I've watched him in the newspapers and watched his political career, and he, it seems that he's done a really good job of standing up for uh, good and, and right and, and progressive activities. In, in his role as, as president of the CTA, um, I, the, what I, the way I would characterize it to you and, and to my students is that he seems to stand for uh, data-driven decision-making. Let's understand what's going on, let's take action on the, on the basis of, of what we measure and what we project uh, will, will be a, a good thing. Uh, I've watched him and we've watched him uh, lead the organization toward uh, great leaps in the direction of improving the state of good repair of the, of the infrastructure, um, money which seems to be well directed, um, money which I think apparently others have not been able to find. There's been an awful lot of progress that's, that's gone on there that's continued to make the Chicago Transit Authority uh, the uh, preeminent transit operator in, in the nation. Uh, we at Northwestern are particularly proud, although I have to say that this didn't bias our choice of a, an award winner this year, that we've had the opportunity to um, collaborate with the Chicago Transit Authority on, an, on a number of different projects and to bring what we think is progressive thinking and good data and good analysis uh, in, in support of good decision making. Um, the last point I want to make is, is that one of the things that's really Im impressed us as we've watched Forrest's leadership of the Chicago Transit Authority is that the time gap between idea and information and decision seems to be very short. It's not something you can say about every institution in a university or, or government at, at any, any level. So uh, it's, you were the right person. We're, we have, we are greatly honored to have the opportunity to present this award to you um, in memory of Dave Schultz, who was that kind of person. So. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, I want to say that uh, this award is named after David Schultz. You were introduced to his wife, uh, Joanne. David, uh, it, it was actually a conversation between he and a fellow by the name of Jason Ty, who used to work for me uh, as my chief of staff uh, in Washington. They were the two that uh, came up with the idea for this transportation uh, uh, symposium. And uh, then Dave went to Henry Beenan to get approval to do it. So I guess the real reason that we're here is because of Dave Schultz. 
Uh, it was his idea in the first place. He brought it to a staff member of mine, and they both brought it then to the president of the university who approved it. Uh, but there's a tremendous uh, uh, connection between Dave Schultz and Forrest Claypool uh, that I'm not so sure I really realized up until uh, today. Uh, Forrest has been an elected public official. Uh, Dave Schultz was an elected public official. Uh, Forrest has been the head of several different significant agencies here in the Chicagoland area. One of them was the Chicago Park District, which if I had had my way back in 1983 when Rich Daly was supposed to win for mayor of the city of Chicago, I would have been the superintendent of the Chicago Park District. Fortunately for him and fortunately for me, he didn't win. Consequently, I stayed in Congress when I was a million times better off. But Forrest uh, has been, as I say, just like Dave Schultz, elected public official, an administrator of significant agencies, now, I said to Forrest at the table that the one thing he hasn't done has been heavily involved in uh, the academic life. And he says, well, he did teach two courses of public policy, but he realized for the financial compensation he was getting, it was awfully, awfully hard work, so he moved on as quickly as he could. Now, I want to add to what Joe had to say in regards to why Forrest gets this award. Uh, I've uh, worked with the CTA ever since I retired uh, from Congress. So I've worked under several different uh, leaders of the CTA. And uh, Forrest is really the first one who has taken that job and moved ahead with many, many plans without being concerned, quite frankly, about federal money or state money or you know, how this may play politically or that may pay, play politically. He has moved ahead what he thought was best. And having had the experience as a public official and as an administrator of a number of other agencies, besides being the chief of staff for Richard M. Daley, uh, I think it gave him the background, the confidence to make many of the moves that he has made. And one of the most significant moves he made was to bring labor peace, really, to the CTA on a contract that for once is not only fair to the employees, but fair to the Chicago Transit Authority, and thereby being fair to the taxpayers of the city of Chicago. So without further ado, I want to award the David E. Schultz Award this year to Forrest Claypool, the head of the Chicago Transit Authority. Forrest. Someplace we have a photographer. There we go. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Lipinski. Even though your son is now the Congressman Lipinski, uh, you're still the Congressman, always will be. So, And I'm very honored to, for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, uh, Bill Lipinski's uh, name is associated with those who follow transportation and those who follow Chicago politics is synonymous with transportation progress and the economic development and the quality of life improvements that comes with that. And his leadership in Washington for many, many years was central to the city's success, whether it was at O'Hare Airport, Midway Airport, or elsewhere. And as I was reminding him at lunch, uh, he also will always have uh, the honor of being in every political science textbook in the United States for generations to come over how the Orange Line was built. And I know many of you uh, know that story, but uh, that, that's also kind of a fun, fun legacy for uh, in the political science realm. Um, and it's been great working with, uh, with Dan Lipinski as well in the short time I've been here in the federal issues in Washington where he's been an outstanding leader, including on the recent uh, attempt to, uh, by some, some on the um, misguided elements in the Republican Party to, uh, to curtail investment in urban transportation. Uh, also, Dave Schultz, and I was happy to be here with Joanne, uh, Dave's widow. Uh, 
I knew Dave well. Um, I used to bring him, when I was running the parks, in fact, to my retreats where he would lead symposiums and teach my managers um, about customer service and um, some of the techniques he'd learned over the years. He was a tremendous resource, someone who was intellectually curious and dynamic, and so I'm very honored to have an award here today that's in his, his name. I also want to thank uh, um, uh, IDOT Secretary Ann Schneider and um, CMAP Executive Direct Director Randy Blankenhorn for their efforts to keep Chicago and Illinois moving. And I don't know if uh, con former Congressman Costello, was he here as well today? Yes, yes, I'd like to th thank him and uh, recognize him as well. And of course, Northwestern University, which as we mentioned, um, is hosting today's event, but um, also was my partner in completing um, some very uh, extensive and complicated analytical work that led to a recent comprehensive restructuring in our bus and rail service uh, to better meet ridership demands and trends. And we've appreciated the partnership with Northwestern University and continue to work with the center. Uh, and uh, you know, we are moving fast at the CTA, I appreciate uh, you mentioned of that bill. Uh, in fact, in the first uh, 20 months of the Mayor Emanuel's administration, the CTA has committed more than $4 billion of projects that are either underway or planned that will improve the safety, enhance the customer experience, and boost the overall reliability of the bus and rail system. Uh, the Mayor and I strongly believe that our region's economy and health is, is tied to a modern, vibrant transit system. And these critical projects we are designed to bring the CTA into a state of good repair and to begin to expand and modernize it for the future, but the, in a very long, obviously, and expensive and complicated process. I emphasize on long, those of you who are students of transportation investment know the extraordinary amount of time and effort it takes from conception to design to launch to procurement to regulatory approvals to actual construction that it takes to achieve these, these important ends. So we did not want to waste time out of the gate of the new administration uh, under Mayor Emanuel to get these critical, long overdue projects going, and they are well underway. Um, and um, the uh, one part of that is three Ps. I know a big part of the theme today has been public-private partnerships, and we too believe that a con the uh, partnerships with the private sector are a part of one piece of the key to keeping mass transit healthy. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, some people think of 3Ps and they think it's uh, privatization. That's not the case at all. It's not about selling off assets. Uh, we're committed to fully owning and operating our assets. Uh, board, but it's about meaningful changes in the procurement process along with a small potential share of private investment. Uh, the cost and complexity of our projects warrant considerations of uh, alternative delivery methods. And worldwide, we, we've seen this. Uh, where the transit industry, industry has embraced a design, build, finance, maintain process as the three P standard, which increases the efficiency of the process uh, and builds in performance standards that ensure uh, quality, but also shift much of the risk to the contractor. Uh, a very, a, a sort of a small uh, element of, uh, example of a sub-element of that is our recent $86 million Red Line North project, which uh, significantly upgraded seven uh, hundred-year-old stations on the North Red Line that had fallen into a state of disrepair and neglect. Uh, we did this project for the first time with a design-build approach, an innovative way to expedite the project and invest more quickly in our system. And this project is now nearly complete and is already reaping benefits to our customers. Uh, in addition, the CTA is using, uh, and I might add that one of the things we were able to do because of the flexibility of that contract is literally at the last minute drop in uh, extra work to eliminate slow zones on tracks in that area, which under normal procurement standards would have taken at least another year uh, to, to do. Um, the CTA is using P3 to modernize our fair payment system as well. Uh, as some of you know, beginning uh, later this year, we'll move to a system that allows customers to pay by credit card or debit uh, at a turnstile. Those of you who have a, a credit card in your wallet that has a little, uh, it looks like an audio wave symbol on it, you're already ready to go. You just put it up against any bus or a rail turnstile, it'll go beep. And, and you're in. It's convenient, it's fast, and it brings other benefits to our customers. Uh, the, the contractor for that project is Cubic, and it, once again, it was a complete design, build, finance, maintain 3P, which once implemented will make Chicago the first major U.S. city to adopt an open fare system for transit. This is expected to save the CTA $50 million over the life of the contract with Cubic compared to what it would cost the CTA to maintain the existing uh, legacy infrastructure. And there are other opportunities for P3s in the future. Some of you may have heard of those as well. Uh, Long-term investments such as the extension of the Red Line South uh, to 95th Street, um, I mean to 103rd Street. Uh, Red, Red Line Purple Modernization, a program uh, to rebuild 
the uh, red line north, our busiest uh, section, um, uh, uh, coming all the way through and serving in the Northwestern University here in, in Evanston. Uh, that's, that, are, that line already serves one in five CTA rail passengers, but it's more than 90 years old. So to pursue strategic P3 opportunities, the CTA last February hired a team of financial advisors led by Goldman Sachs to explore three P opportunities for both the Red Line Purple Modernization and the Red Line Extension. And Goldman and their financial advisors have worked the first year on a pro bono basis with us. We're moving into the second year, made significant progress. They're bringing their worldwide reach uh, and, and, and their expertise dealing with the world's biggest and best construction and transformation finance firms to assist the CTA in the planning of these projects. These firms have experience in forming a consortium of global and local teams that design, build, finance, and maintain projects, and they're proven, uh, proven in the marketplace to lower costs by between 10 and 20 percent. Uh, in fact, uh, just after lunch, you will hear the experience in Denver, uh, which I think is, is, a, is, which is doing just that in a series of uh, very dynamic transit rail projects that are already underway. So there's some very real uh, timely experience there to draw from. Uh, the response from these industry outreach meetings with the CTA has been overwhelmingly enthusiastic about these two red line projects as potential 3P opportunities. A CTA looks forward to delving deeper into the 3P process so that we can move forward quickly and bring more benefits uh, to our customers. So uh, the, a lot of the focus on your, your consor consortium and symposiums today are, I think, right on the cutting edge of where transit is headed, particularly as we try to invest in the future at a time of declining state and federal resources where uh, more innovative approaches and more partnerships with the private sector, I think, will be, will be required. So again, uh, thank you all for, your, for honoring me today. It's a privilege to be here as part of this, and once again, thank you for your time and interest and focus on this wonderful industry, an important part of, the, of, our, uh, of our region.